Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. He stands at the beginning and is victorious at the end of all things. And because of that, hope is rising in your life and in the earth. Welcome to Hope Today. We're so glad that you're with us. I'm Anna and I'm here with Sydney and Corey. And Corey, you've got the guest today. What are I we do. in for? I do. We're in for a wonderful conversation today. Listen, 2023 marks an important year for Israel as it celebrates its 75th anniversary of becoming a nation. Coming up in just a moment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Johnson, who is the founder and president of Israel Today Ministries. And he's going to be sharing about the significance of this anniversary. Plus, he's going to be offering some meaningful insight into the complexity of Old Testament and New Testament scriptures and how important the link between the two actually is. Listen, this is a very powerful conversation for the fact that a lot of people are very confused between Old and New Testament. And when you really don't understand the typology, and when I say typology, that the Old Testament is a foreshadow of what Jesus is going to happen, what's going to, what, what, what takes place. I didn't know that for years. Right. And when I began to understand, I began to say, God was really present in all of this when I thought it was just isolated stories and scriptures. So mm -hmm. that's something and Sid, you've been talking about covenant. Tell us a little bit about what God's been speaking yeah, to you. Yeah, I think like what I love when we have these conversations about the Old Testament, I'll be honest, I spent a lot of time in the Old Testament more than the New Testament, but it's all about the covenants of God. And so we have to understand as believers, as the ecclesia, about the covenant that God has with us and that through Jesus that we are called the bride. And you know, speaking of like June is a month that we talk about weddings and covenants and all these things. I think it is so important in the season that we have a deeper understanding of our faith, deeper understanding of what the scriptures tell and foretell about Jesus because it just, when it, it, it hits your spirit in such a new way, Anne, and you have a deeper revelation of what God has been doing from the beginning and the end as you so eloquently spoke at the beginning of the show, I think it is now the time in the season for us to have a deeper understanding of who we are in Christ so that we know our identity and we can truly flourish in him. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's so cool to think about that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit have always been. And so when we read in Genesis about the creation of the world, Jesus was there. And the, the story of Jesus runs all throughout scripture and see God knew in all his omnipotence that humans would fall and that we would need a redeemer, a savior. And so from the beginning, he knew that Jesus would come and die to save you and me like God seriously has got every detail in the palm of his hands and because of that we have nothing to fear because we serve a victorious god you know that's that's so powerful what you're saying there because if you don't understand in scripture exactly what jesus did like from the fall from the beginning when we were in you know in the garden right and then you go to the the fall and then you're in the old testament and there's all those stories and then jesus comes with that new covenant if you don't understand that you get stuck in old testament law and what happens with a lot of people is they don't understand the forgiving power of God, the grace of God, and the need of the Holy Spirit. And so people are going to be beating up on themselves over and over. So this is some things I want to get into today when we get into this theological conversation, because we got to get deep. We have to take the time to get away from the emotions of it and really get into the real and grafted word of God. So our next guest is the founder and president of Israel Today Ministries, which has provided over 218,000 meals to those in Israel who need it the most children, Holocaust survivors, and families. Dr. Jeffrey Johnson is also an author, and in his new book, Hope Rising, Messianic Promise, he fuses together Old Testament and New Testament scriptures and shares the importance of how the two intersect with each other. Dr. Jeff, welcome to Hope Today. Well, it's a delight to be with you, Corey. Listen, it is an honor to have you today. Um, just going through the book and being able to talk to you about some of these deep, deep uh, um, focuses here, we'd love to get into this. Can you tell us what inspired you, first of all, to not only write the book, but what inspired you to get into your studies in general? Just talk about you and who you are. Oh my, well, uh, thank you for asking. Great question. I, I came to faith uh, I was 18 years old under the ministry of a Jewish 
uh, evangelist, in fact, uh, by the name of Hyman Appleman. And my mother was Jewish, my father was Swedish, and I always tell people, if you want to know what a Jewish Viking looks like, that would be me. Uh, but the motivational impetus behind this book uh, is principally because of there's still, in this post-pandemic world, there is still an incredible amount of anxiety and fear and anger. All you have to do is drive down the road, you know. And uh, so uh, that was the impetus behind this. And we have received emails and uh, snail mails, phone calls, saying how this book has encouraged believers who are dealing still with a great deal of anxiety. Uh, so uh, that's the reason for the book. And what greater hope than Messianic promise, uh, the Messiah, that's where our hope lies in, is, is in Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. You know what, you, you just said a real powerful word right there when you said anxiety, and that's something that so many are dealing with today, right? So when it comes to scripture, what is the anxiety? Can you identify that? And then, and then share with us how this understanding of clarity helps to destroy that anxiety. Oh my, great question. Okay, in the book, there's a chapter, for example, on Psalm 91. And the psalmist writes that we do not have to fear the arrow that flies by day. And he's not talking about a literal uh, arrow. What he's talking about is demonic force. Uh, and Paul echoes that. You remember when Paul wrote, uh, this know in the last days, perilous times will come. Uh, well, the word perilous means, implies uh, demonically fierce. And in the Old Testament, the first covenant, the Tanakh, uh, or the Hebrew Bible, uh, you know, David uh, or Moses, who wrote Psalm 91, there, there's a debate on who, it doesn't matter, but it's there. Uh, he says, uh, listen, when the bad thing happens, what people would do, they would run to the temple if they were near the temple. They would run to the temple to get behind the walls, to get as close to the Shekinah glory that hovered over uh, the Ark of the Covenant uh, behind the holy of, the curtain, the Holy of Holies, and they tried to get as close to the presence of God as they possibly could. And when the enemy came, when the plague came, when that bad thing came or began to happen, and Paul again addresses that, he says, listen, believer, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. We no longer, when the bad thing happens, when that fear, that bump in the night that frightens us, we don't have to run to a place to get behind the wall. All we have to do is reach up and say, Lord, help. And he does. And it, it, it speaks to what Isaiah said, that the Lord said he would take you by the right hand. Uh, walk with you, as it were. He says, do not fear. I will help you. Oh, it's a powerful, powerful reality. So, so it's, uh, it's written in the Tanakh and in the New Testament, the Brit Tatashah in Hebrew, the New Testament, all throughout Scripture. Here, God is saying, I will help you. You don't have to fear the night. Let me tell you something. You are ministering right now by <laughs> what you are saying. Uh, you know, my head goes back and forth. I try not to shout too much, but that's the uh, Pentecostal in me. But let me tell you, that is so encouraging, especially when dealing with the understanding of how we approach the Old Testament. And then when Jesus came and we had the Holy Spirit, the receiving of the Holy Spirit, that we are that new temple. You actually said something, and I want to uh, quote this. You said that you really don't like to refer to it as the Old and New Testament, but more so the first and second covenant. Can you explain what you mean by that? Uh, yes, sir. The, the word old implies irrelevance. You know, it, it's, it's no longer relevant. And uh, there was a, a man, and I, with a little bit of church history there, uh, in the second century, there was this guy, a, a shipbuilder, a Turkish shipbuilder named Marcion. 
And he became very popular. He had a lot of money, a lot of influence, and he tried to eradicate the Jewish connection of the, the ecclesia, the church, the assembly that the Lord established. And, uh, un and unfortunately, well, fortunately, he was deemed a heretic. Unfortunately, that teaching has trickled down 2,000 years. Today is called replacement theology where all the blessings and promises you find in the Old Testament applying to Abraham and all of that now simply apply to the church. And, and Israel is insignificant. Uh, it's a teaching today that unfortunately is popular. So we, it's not old. There's nothing old about it. It's the first covenant. The New Testament is the second covenant. Uh, that was uh, revealed to us, and the old and the new go hand in hand. For example, uh, we, you mentioned creation. Uh, when God created man, uh, he blew uh, into his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. He, and you read in, in Genesis there where it says we are created in his image, both male and female. We are created in his image. That breath of life, the rabbis say, was a kiss from God. And if you read the Song of Songs, which is a fascinating uh, study and, and so forth, when you know when you read the Bible, you get that aha moment. You know, you read it a hundred times, all of a sudden it made sense to you. God kissed you. Okay, that's the idea. So God kissed Adam, as it were, uh, uh, breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. We are created in his image. That means you and I have significance. And Psalm 40, verse 17 says that I am poor and needy, and yet God thinks about me. You know how on your iPhone you have pictures of your children, your loved ones, your grandkids, whatever it is, on your iPhone? If God had an iPhone, your picture would be on his phone. He thinks about you. He cares for you. You are important to him. And all you got to do is reach up and say, Lord, I need you. And he shows up. He's always there. But all you got to do is say help. And he will. Wow. Wow. What you are saying is so healing to so many people, specifically believers. Because I, I know for me, one thing that I had struggled with was this, I have to earn it. This, this yeah. transactional relationship with God where, oh, you know, I know he's forgiven me, but I don't think he likes me, right? You know, I, I, oh. I, I, I'm, I'm not always doing the right thing. So, you know, those other ones who, who fast and they pray all the time, you know, they have more favor. And it's just really not true. And Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing and all that getting, get understanding because the enemy is always trying to confuse us. So there is a scripture I want you to elaborate on. We're going to pull that scripture up now and I'm going to read that. That's from Isaiah uh, chapter 41, verse 13, New King James Version. It says, for I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. Dr. Jeff, can, can, you, can you elaborate on this understanding? Oh, man, you know when I when when you read that verse, I, I my mind immediately goes to Peter walking out of the boat on the water to meet the Lord. Do you remember that story? The Lord's walking on the water, yes. and and all the disciples in the boat they're like frightened. It's a ghost. What you know? What are we going to do? Peter had the chutzpah, the guts to go, Lord, if that's you, let me come to you. And so he goes out. He walks on the water, and and the waves are all around him, but he's walking on the water. And, and he sank. So would I. I mean, wouldn't that freak you out, the, all the waves? He's walking on the water. And what you hear in the sermons is, oh, ye of little faith. You know, okay? Now, as a grandparent, you know, uh, you tell your grandkids, don't stick the thing in the socket, you know, uh, you know, on the wall, you know, the plug on the wall. And, of course, they do, and zzz, they get zapped, and you go, now, I told you not to do that, didn't I? And you hug them, and you love them. You're okay. That is what O ye of little faith means. But what we don't hear, now this is the awesome part, Corey. What we don't hear about, now the Lord reached out his hand, just like the prophet Isaiah said, pulled Peter up on the water. What you don't hear in the sermons is this, that Peter and Jesus 
walked on the water to get back into the boat. Mm. And you know, and I know there was a conversation there. It's not recorded for us, but I would have loved to have heard what the Lord said to Peter. But he walked back on the water to get back in the boat. The Lord says, I got you, Peter. I got you. And you mentioned earlier about not feeling worthy and you're, you're trying to, Lord, you know, listen, there are days we do this better. <laughs> I don't know about you. There are days I do this better and there are days I, oh man, you know, you would not be proud. But you know what's beautiful? Lamentations 3 says that when the sun comes up in the morning, his grace and mercies are renewed. Do you remember as a kid, you're playing hide and seek or something and it didn't go your way and you say, let's have a do-over, let's have a do-over. You know what's beautiful about the Lord? When you have a day that you don't do it so well, you get to have a do-over tomorrow morning when the sun comes up and his mercies are renewed and you pray, Lord, help me to do it better today. Help me to follow you better today. That is grace. That is mercy. Oh, my. I, I get excited about that. You're talking about being a Pentecostal. Man, I'm going to shout here, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it, yes. but it, it's, you know, God loves us so much. And I don't know how much time we have, but if I can share one more thing. Yeah, sure. And oh, also, please yeah. tell us about your organization and, and how it's oh, been helping yeah. as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yes, and that's that's the, the, the reason I do all these things. Write the books, speak in churches and colleges universities and all of that is to bring an awareness to the hearers that Israel, a country of 9 million people, has 1.1 million of their children living in poverty. Shimon Perez spoke to that in 2015, but not many leaders have come forward with that. 1.1 million children living in, pov in poverty. And about one in three Holocaust survivors living in Israel are also living in poverty. That comes to around 50,000 or so. So we provide meals and educational material for specifically for the children uh, to help them to learn to read, write, and so forth, Bible-related material. And so uh, the Lord has enabled us to provide well over 200,000 meals. And... Uh, in Israel, this earns you the right to speak. Because I always ask, why do you do this? And we're able to share why. And in a loving, very uh, gentle way to share the story of Mashiach. And uh, it works, Corey, it works. So this is what we do. At the end of the day, this is why I get up in the morning, you know. Yeah. This is my passion to feed those children and to feed the Holocaust survivors. Wow, that is so powerful. I, I, just, I, I feel the presence of God really in this conversation with truth and sharing, and, and, and uh, I, I feel that kindness. You said you're a grandfather as well, so I can feel that <laughs> grandfather kindness that you have as well. Can you elaborate about the, this, the 75th anniversary uh, for Israel and, and talk about that a little bit? Oh, my goodness. Um, Israel is nothing less than a miracle. When you realize that for 2,400 years, Jewish people have been scattered throughout the whole world. And the, the first covenant, the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, uh, all, the prophets say one day that Israel will come, that will be restored. And it's a progressive restoration. Uh, the land promised to them goes from Egypt to the Euphrates, up to Lebanon, down to the southern part of Israel. They don't have all the land yet. But in the 1890s, a guy by the name of Theodore Herzl said, we need the land. Uh, and he began the first Jewish Congress, as it were, in Basel, Switzerland. But since that time, World War I, World War II, uh, the Holocaust, uh, 1947, the UN says we're going to draw boundaries. 1948, Israel became a nation. Listen, it's unprecedented in human history. After 2,400 years of people that were scattered all around the world have gone back to the place they started. 
And that is a miracle. And Yeshua said, Jesus said, you know, when you see these things happen, but the redemption is near. Wow, that is so incredible. The, the, the understanding, the history, the scripture, the relevance. What you are doing is healing people and healing a nation by bringing truth. Because, you know, the enemy, he's always trying to create so much confusion by, by really rearranging scripture and, and taking pieces out of it that people may not understand. And I love, even in your book, how you expound on the breakdown of the Hebrew and the Greek to really understand the original context of scripture and what God was really saying. We know the term lost in translation and that can easily happen. So Dr. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. It was just a wonderful time talking with you. You're doing great ministry and I pray, pray God's special blessings over you, your family and everything that you're doing for the kingdom. Well, thank you so much, Corey, uh, Corey, Anna, Anna. Uh, Sydney, what a delight to be with you guys this morning. Uh, shalom and blessings upon you as well, my friend. Thank you. Blessings upon you as well. Thank you. Wow, what an amazing time we had with Dr. Jeff. Hey, stick around. We're going to have some ministry after this break. I love your Cornerstone Television t-shirt. Where'd you get it? I am so glad that you asked. You know, this is an exclusive offer for the month of June for you to receive this one-of-a-kind CTVN t-shirt. You can support and sport your favorite Christian television network this summer when you go to barbecues, hanging out with family, and having tons of fun. Oh man, that is so much fun. And speaking of Cornerstone Television, I love their programming, especially that Hope Today show. Yes, we love Hope Today and all of the programs. And you know, with your best gift, request your Cornerstone Television Network t-shirt when you give this month. We have sizes from extra small to 6XL. It is 100% cotton. It is quality and we want you to have this on you today. That's right. We have one for everyone and you get to represent the station you love with your own logo t-shirt. You'll enjoy this wearable reminder that hope happens here as together we spread the love of Jesus every day. You know, we cannot do it without you. When you give, you help us to impact Pittsburgh and beyond, reaching those of all nations and generations because we know people need to know the hope and the love of Jesus like never before. So why don't you give us a call at 888-665-4483 and request your very own Cornerstone TV t-shirt. That's right, you can also give online at ctvn.org slash donate. We would love to see you out in public somewhere wearing this t-shirt. Maybe we'll have ours on too. Thanks for supporting us. We truly do appreciate your support because it enables us to have powerful conversations like we just had with Dr. Jeff. And you know, one thing, Corey and Anna, that is just sitting in my spirit, I know we were talking about the covenant. You know, he's saying that, you know, instead of calling the Old Testament, the New Testament, it's like, it's two, it's covenant one and covenant two. And I just think about how much he loves us. And one thing that Dr. Jeff said that even hearing about in the beginning of Genesis, and I don't know about you all, but some, I feel like there's time after time, I just keep going back to the beginning. And when you study and you read in Genesis, says, I just feel like the more you study and you read the Hebrew words, it just blows up in your spirit. But what he talked about in the beginning when that, that breath that he breathed into us, and I believe the Hebrew word is neshama, that was a kiss. Woo! Yeah. Just think about that, that in the beginning, like God is kissing upon all of us. That's how much he loves us, like his stamp, his mark, it's all on us. And sometimes you just sit in that revelation, Anna, and it is just it's like breathtaking. I'm, I'm just at a loss for words of just thinking about how much he may, loves us, what he's done for us. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, this year, I just, the prayer of my heart is that each one of us would get a deeper revelation of who our God is, who our Jesus is, who our Holy Spirit is, and how we truly have nothing to fear because of how great God's love is for us and because of how great He is. Today, if you're struggling with anxiety or fear, think about that scripture where God speaks and He says, fear not. I've heard it said that He says, fear not, 
like over 350 times in the Bible because there's that many days in the year. So every day we need to hear that, that he is calling us to rise up, to know that we are protected in him, that we are rooted in him, hidden in him. And he has gone before us. He is behind us. He is all around us. And he is clearing the way when there seems to be no way. And he will bring his work and his purpose purposes to completion, Corey. Wow, wow. And that is so healing, especially to know, you know, that scripture is really romantic. You know, some people say, oh, oh, the book of the Songs of Solomon, you know, that's where the romance is. But scripture is really romantic. It's a love story about a, 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 a love that God had for us, an intimacy, a closeness, and then evil gets in between. And then, then his, his wonderful love is lost in the world and he's searching for us and reaching for us and then he gets into man's likeness he gets into a suit like us he puts it on he gets born he ra raises up he lives our entire life and then he saves us he takes it all upon himself when many of us feel incredibly guilty and many of us are guilty for the things that we have done god says no i'm going to take all of that on to me and I'm gonna let you go, I'm gonna let you be free. That is such love. And I know there may be many of you right now who are beating up on yourself about the things that you've done. And you don't think that you're worthy of the love of God. And that is the trap of the enemy. But scripture, what it does is it really says, no, you don't know how much he really does love you. It's a ferocious, fervent love for you. And just receive that love today. If you have to watch this again, go ahead on the YouTube, watch it again. Let it minister to you because God's love for you is so strong. Sid, I feel God bubbling inside of you. I do. I feel it. I do. So one thing I'm just going to ask because the Holy Spirit has prompted this in my heart. And I just like know if Dr. Jeff is still with us and just doc, is, can we pull him up on the screen to do just like pray us out in Hebrew if he can or just say a prayer. So Dr. Jeff, can you pray us out? We have 30 seconds. Just pray us out for the show today. Sure. Father, we thank you for this time. Bless the listeners uh, that watch this. Speak to their hearts. Draw them close to you. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the hope that rises in our heart because of, because of the Shiak. Bless each one. Thank you for the gift of life and as always for the gift of eternal life. Uh, in your name, in Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you. Have a great day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, spreading hope and music as a testament to the glory, power, and love of God. Piano artist Kim Deerdorf shares his miraculous story of lifting music and inspirational message that God has a plan and purpose for everyone. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.